I never asked for this. You see something, say something. Report suspicious activity to local authorities. If you're not breaking the law, if you're not doing anything wrong, then you shouldn't worry what the government is doing. Terrorism, 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 Al-Qaeda, Mohammed, terrorism, terrorism, war in Iraq, war in Afghanistan, Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden. It's not like my government would ever do it to me, but guess what? You're wrong. Protest is now illegal in the U.S. Uh, move along, citizen. And yet we just sit there and calmly do and say, oh, they're making us safe. I don't even know whose side I'm on. Okay, this is straight out of 1984. We're living in a police state. of what happened to me. The city is being turned into a police state. Militarized riot gear, LRAD machines, and drones overhead. Corporations have more power than the government. Our government now works for the banks. America, the greatest losses to our freedom have come not from someone attacking us, but from the government ignoring the Constitution and the majority letting them get away with it. Yeah, we torture. Yeah, we spy on you. Yeah, we do all of this, but it's no big deal. Get used to it. You know what? We're not going to get used to it. Police have opened fire on the crowd. We're all in serious, serious danger. Millions of dollars spent on new police gear, trucks ready to function as rolling barricades. What you have here is, this is the wars coming home. If anybody doesn't believe this government is capable, capable of doing these kinds of things, you're out of time. Go back to bed, America. Your government is in control again. Well, you know, America is a strange country. All you need to keep them pacified is give them a dozen donuts and a gun. They don't seem to have the capacity, the intellectual capacity, to think of their own self-interest in any other way than oh, the next five minutes. It's time to wake up. Wake up, America! Wake up, America. Homeless, the 
And I didn't speak up because I wasn't any of them. Wasn't any of them. And then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak up for me. The proles, if only they could somehow become conscious of their own strength would have no need to conspire. They needed only to rise up and shake themselves like a horse shaking off flies. If they chose they could blow the party to pieces tomorrow morning. Surely sooner or later it must occur to them to do it, until they become conscious they will never rebel, and until after they have rebelled they cannot become conscious. The time is coming when the window for us to restore the control of our government to ourselves will close, and we had damn well better act before then. You want to know why the American public is fit? They're fit because they're not seeing their Congress do the work that they're sent to do. We need to demand more of our elected officials. Damn Bill the Carter! All the damn time! Come out here in the last bucket! And I gotta try to figure out how to vote for my people! Bathed in the excesses of power, they passed a bill that by their own admission, they hadn't read. This is PR politics. Anonymous consent that we bring up the bill to extend the tax cut for 160 million Americans as you walk off the floor, Mr. Speaker, you're walking out. If you want to stand up on the floor of the Senate and defend the Wall Street banks like Bank of America and the credit card companies, be my guest. I would rather stand with the consumers and retailers who've been taken to the cleaners for years and years. Why aren't we questioning the underlying premise of the need for a bailout with taxpayers' money? Why aren't we passing new laws to stop the speculation which triggered this? Why aren't we directly helping homeowners with their debt burden? Why aren't we helping American families faced with bankruptcy? Why aren't we reducing debts for Main Street instead of Wall Street? Is this the United States Congress or the Board of Directors of Goldman Sachs? When I fuck up, who bails me out? No one. There is no one here to object. This is why the American people have thrown you out of power. You see, you're right. It is within your sole discretion to recognize a member. But you chose to exercise the power of the gavel, Madam Speaker. Therein lies the problem. If he's not here to pull off this political stunt, then we should just proceed and, and this bill should be withdrawn. It is the right thing to do by the American people to stop these, these tactics. Enough! And make no mistake about it, this is not about national security. But my point about this is this is a war without end. I'm afraid of giving up the right to trial by jury and hoping that someday they will declare an end to this war and they'll give back the right to trial by jury. Mr. Speaker, a nationwide revolt is developing over the body scanners at the airports and it should. And we also know there are individuals who are making money off this. They say trust us. Trust us. The people who brought us Katrina to be competent in face of a disaster. Trust us. The people who brought us warrantless wiretapping and other excesses eroding our civil liberties. Trust us. Many of us were told in private conversations that if we voted against this bill on Monday, that the sky would fall, the market would drop two or 3,000 points the first day, another couple thousand the second day, and a few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. We're not trying to scare kids. This president's foreign policy is what's scaring the kids of this country. Well, it's the same people that told us Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. Same people that told us Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Same people that told us we are going to be able to use the oil for reconstruction money. Same people that told us that we'd be greeted as liberators, not occupiers. Same people, same president that told us the Taliban is gone. Same president that told us that Poland is our ally two days before they pull out. Same president that tells us Iraq is going just great. Same president that tells us the economy is going just great. Same people that told us the tax cut was going to create millions of jobs. Same people that told us that the Medicare program only cost $400 billion when it really cost $540 billion. So please forgive us for not believing what you're saying. Please forgive the students of this country for not believing what you're saying. Not one thing, not one thing about this war that has been told to the American people or that has been told to these college students has been true. Not one thing. Bremer says we need more troops. The Pentagon says we need more troops. And this 
president can't get them from the international community, there's only one option left. Let's be honest with the American people. Fascism by definition is when corporations team up with organized religion and control the government. Do I have to say anything more? Wouldn't you say that we're on the brink if we're not there? We're witnessing a slow and steady takeover of our true freedoms. And now we see the government taking over banks, we see the government taking over, uh, over car companies, insurance, we're being told what cars we can drive, what, uh, uh, how much we can make, and now they want to take control of our health care. It's one more attempt for them to put everything that we do day and night under the control of the federal government. Are you willing to sacrifice your freedom for liberty? Well, I say that uh, they're taking away our free will. The American people are being forced to do something they, want, they don't want to do. But there really is a difference between us, and it's basically this. We don't think the government should be in control of all of this. We want people to be in control. And that, at the end of the day, is the big difference. What they are trying to do is create an America very unlike the America that has existed for centuries. The thing associated with America, freedom, is precisely what must be destroyed if this is to be turned into a fundamentally different country to suit Obama's vision of the country and of himself. I think he's, he's going way beyond his constitutional powers assigned to the executive branch, which is, by definition, an imperial President. Once again, total power in one person's hands, not the American way. Mm -hmm. uh, he's centralizing power inside the Beltway, taking power and decision making from families, from individuals, and as a consequence, what he's doing is building an unchecked executive. Now, I hate to point fingers at anybody, but the president administration probably had a lot to do with that. But you know who's responsible for it? We are. Personal responsibility. Where is the outrage to come from? From you. It turns out you're the knight in shining armor. First, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. It is time for us to take our country back. The real problem is that the American people have been too submissive. We have accepted the notion that we should be treated like cattle. Make us safe, make us secure, put us in the barbed wire. It's time for the American people to stand up and shrug off the shackles of our government. And the way I see it, they're not going to quit doing it until they bring this country to its knees. So I think we should all rise up and we should stop this administration from what they're doing because they're destroying this country. We the people have got to get back, get control back of our country. Uh, the American people will revolt. Our government sucks. So what do you say? Maybe we should all just stop paying our taxes and revolt. Because this is bull When our forefathers wrote the Constitution with the right to bear arms, it was not about hunting and fishing. The Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, is there so that we, the public, if our government gets out of control, we have the ability to rise up and change it. Now many people have said to me, well wait a minute, how could we the citizens ever stand up to the U.S. government and their entire military might? Well wait a minute, I got the answer. We threw everything we had at Vietnam and they were nothing but a bunch of farmers with a few AK-47s and they withstood it all. Don't ever allow anyone to tell you that it can't be done. It can be done. To the government of the United States, those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. It is the constitutional right of the people to reform this government as we see fit. Over the past year, we have shown you what we are capable of. You can continue to resist us or you can allow us to exercise our rights. We truly hope you choose the latter so that we can peacefully return this country to the principles it was founded upon and restore power to the people. To the citizens of the United States, it is our goal to reform this current government with your help. We do not want anarchy. We do not want chaos. What we want is to restore power to the people. 
governments are supposed to derive their powers from the consent of the governed. Over the next few months, we will be releasing a series of videos detailing our reformation plans. Idea Vote will give every American a voice. We ask from you to use your voices. This new world is not one that we wish to shape ourselves. This new world will be that of the people, and the choice is yours to make in what direction we will go. Operation Blackout Phase 2 Success. Operation Blackout Phase 3 Engaged. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. But when the government fears the people, there is liberty. When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government. It is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. He has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. For depriving us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury. For abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states that they are absolved from all allegiance to the british crown and that all political connection between them and the state of great britain is and ought to be totally dissolved